Hey everyone, hope you're all doing great. My name is Oliver, and today I'm going to be talking about the differences between mechanical engineering, software engineering, and mechatronics engineering as requested by one of you guys. So let's get right into it. Now this is a very common source of confusion, especially those who are considering specializing in mechatronics engineering at a college or university. There are many similarities between these three fields and making the decision can often be tough and you'll get people telling you that mechatronics is a lot like software or it's the same as mechanical or choose mechatronics if you want a bit of both. So my goal today is to clear up all of this confusion and make sure that you know exactly what you're getting yourself into when you choose a specialization. Before I get into the differences of each field, it's important to look online to try and find some definitions for each type of engineering. Let's begin with software engineering from Wikipedia. Software engineering is the systematic application of engineering approaches to the development of software. Software engineering is a computing discipline. So in my experience, I've found this to be a good definition. In software engineering, you will likely take one or two classes on learning the basics of how to code in a particular language. The majority of your other courses will teach you software engineering principles, such as making sure that you're making a robust, unambiguous, and reliable design. You'll learn about riveting topics, such as the different ways to develop software. For example, the iterative method, the waterfall method, or separations of concerns. You'll learn about the different types of testing, black box, white box, unit tests, and many more. You will likely take a course about data structures and algorithms where you'll learn about all the different kinds of sorting methods such as selection sort, bubble sort, or quick sort. Other classes that you might take are discrete mathematics and applications, digital systems and interfacing, computer architecture, and databases. So if these sound like topics that interest you, software engineering might be the right discipline for you. Next up, we have mechanical engineering. Mechanical engineering is an engineering branch that combines engineering physics and mathematics principles with material science to design, analyze, manufacture, and maintain mechanical systems. It is one of the oldest and broadest of the engineering disciplines. So I think this definition is good, but it misses a few key points. If you choose to go into mechanical engineering, you will be taking courses on kinematics and dynamics, courses relating to designing, testing, and building projects, and you will learn about formal engineering drawings and how to make good specifications. You will also take courses in fluid dynamics, thermodynamics, and electronics to make sure that you have a basic understanding of what your mechanical systems have to interact with. Additionally, you will be taking one more math course than either software or mechatronics has to take, and it's not gonna be an easy one. As expected, a lot of mechanical engineering courses will involve the use of CAD software and learning how to 3D print in order to do rapid prototyping. So if this sounds like something that you'd be interested in, maybe mechanical engineering is the discipline for you. Now, I think this is a good spot to analyze our two engineering disciplines. As I'm sure you could tell from the types of classes that you'll be taking, software engineering and mechanical engineering are starkly different disciplines and have almost nothing in common besides a few engineering principles that transcend almost all types of engineering. Knowing this, we can define our last contender, mechatronics engineering. Mechatronics engineering is an interdisciplinary branch of engineering that focuses on the engineering of electronic, electrical, and mechanical engineering systems and also includes a combination of robotics, electronics, computer, telecommunications, systems, control, and product engineering. This definition does a good job, but it doesn't sum it up very well, so I like to use a different one. Mechatronics offers a balance between mechanical, electrical, and software content with a focus on embedded systems design. Based on this definition, you might anticipate that you'll be taking some software engineering courses, and you'd be right. Specifically, you'll be taking data structures and algorithms, software engineering design principles, signals and systems, and a software project course. You will also be taking some similar courses to mechanical engineers, notably thermodynamics, which is actually taken by almost every type of engineering, kinematics and dynamics, as well as some basic electronics. Mechatronics engineering also pulls content from other disciplines. You'll take courses on electricity and magnetism and analog and digital circuits, which are more traditionally computer engineering or engineering physics courses. Now that we have all of those out of the way, we can get into some of the independent mechatronics courses. Since mechatronics engineering often focuses on embedded systems design, you'll be taking courses on embedded systems, which bring together the software, hardware, 
and circuits courses to allow you to make something really cool. These courses are often lab courses that look a little something like this. In your final years, you might take one or two more courses specifically relating to mechatronics physics and robotics. It's important to note that some mechatronics programs might be more heavy in software, mechanical, or electronics components depending on your school. So make sure to do your research on the upper year courses of your program for the specific school that you're interested in. So as you can see, mechatronics kind of likes to take from wherever it pleases, but it also has its own core courses and in many engineering roles, taking a multidisciplinary approach is much more effective than taking a tunnel vision approach when you're solving a problem. And this is where mechatronics engineers can really shine. So now that we've seen some of the differences in the educational components of the program, how do they differ in the workplace? Well, software engineers are likely to work on big corporate systems and make sure that it's easy to manage and maintain large software databases. Think of things like designing a system for a hospital or a bank or something that requires a high standard of safety and lots of testing. You can also find them working for big tech companies, startups, and for the government. You can expect an average starting salary of about 60,000 USD or if you work for a big tech company, this can be as high as 150,000 USD. Mechanical engineers, on the other hand, are more likely to be working in a manufacturing facility, an engineering design facility, or on finished goods. This includes things like car parts, designing better door handles, or coming up with the casings and hardware for smartphones and other electronics. You can expect a starting salary of about 60,000 USD with room to grow up to 100,000 USD without taking on a management role. Last but not least, we have mechatronics engineers. Jobs for mechatronics engineers can include doing the design for a complex embedded system or working in a manufacturing facility. They can also work as robotics engineers, automation engineers, or control systems engineers in aviation. Some of their tasks could include designing a smartphone system, a home alarm system, or using assembly language to design an operating system. It's a little more difficult to place mechatronics engineers in one particular field, but companies specifically hire mechatronics engineers for their ability to understand how everything works together. Some examples of this are companies like Tesla, Magna International, or Ford. Since mechatronics engineers have a lot of the same coursework as software engineers, they could be candidates for those same software jobs. But they would have to do a little bit more work outside of the classroom or prove to an employer that they are good enough for these roles. They can also work in mechanical engineering roles, but they are less likely to have the same level of CAD and design skills that a mechanical engineer would, and thus would make them less competitive for these roles unless they did a lot of work outside of the classroom. Depending on where you choose to work as a mechatronics engineer, you can expect a starting salary of $60,000 with room to grow in the same way as software engineers. However, you are more likely to see a mechanical engineer and a mechatronics engineer working together on the same factory floor on a different part of a complex system. So in conclusion, since mechatronics engineering is a little bit of a newer field, it is a bit more broad than either software or mechanical engineering. But as we are seeing today, many systems have multiple layers of complexity that require knowledge of three or more engineering disciplines, and this is where mechatronics engineers can really do their best. Check out this video I made for a more detailed look on what mechatronics engineering is. Thank you all so much for stopping by to watch this video. If you found it useful or liked the video, be sure to leave me a like down below. If you want to see more of this, be sure to subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon to be notified whenever I upload a new video. And don't forget to leave me a comment telling me what you think I should cover next time. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you know somebody who is considering any of these engineering disciplines, be sure to share this video with them if you think they'd find it helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.